Welcome back, everybody. Today, I've got the uh, I'm Grego Retro Bowl uh, Golf Polo, if you want one. I'm sorry, they are strictly exclusive to people that hit uh, above 100. Unfortunately, that is limited to just me right now. So, I am playing the Bills week 11 here. We have been on an absolute hot streak. We started off 0-2. We've rattled off 7 straight, but right now, we've got a bit of a situation. Uh, situation numero uno, uh, number one for those of you uh, in, in the States, Colby Gibbs out for three games. Had an absolutely amazing game, probably his best game of his career. We didn't have a running back, we didn't have a tight end. We only had two receivers, and we were able to put up a 40 bomb on the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we are just going to hop into this matchup. If we're starting off with the ball first, it means good things are happening as we turn the ball over on the first... Play the game without our quarterback. I think the strategy for this matchup, especially playing down now, is going to be a, a healthy dose of the, the run game and letting the weapons make plays early. Get the ball to our receivers and tight end uh, very quickly. A lot of bullet passes are going to be very effective because we have about nine yards of arm strength. EJ Diamond on the hitch route makes some separation. We threw the ball so short, but now it is fourth and two. I only have one audible, so I'm going to throw a bullet to the... Uh, to the flat and a stiff arm as well and we throw the ball to the wide receiver who's gonna actually oh my god never mind I got a little too excited and I thought he was about to score but he, he didn't and now he scores on this play Bills do punt so we get the ball back after fumbling it uh, the first play of the game really it's gonna come down to Ken Hull can he make some nice play calls and it looks like he does EJ Diamond they're short of the first down again and they punt again the defense coming up so huge out of the backfield something like that I'm, I'm going through my reads you know that's all me baby Jeff Newman is an option I the backfield he's been very versatile i can't even remember what life was like with the sean kareem because he was so bad and ej diamond tight ropes his way into the end zone we are moving the ball down the field want him over the middle maybe get a nice double hurdle he's just staying up right oh my god and then the freaking linebacker get caught on a, on a block somehow managed to get out of there for another few extra yards can we get one of a touchdown i think we can and we do oh my god man we cannot get a break it's great to have the offense moving we are sitting at number one in the afc as a whole but now colby gibbs and jeff newman are out playing the baltimore ravens at home this time they start off with the ball and they are forced to punt it beautiful stuff here we got a quarterback who is literally fucking terrible and we got a running back who might be even worse but you know we were able to score 30 points last game so i think we can manage uh, i don't think that the running back was really doing too much either i think it was a lot of ej diamond and a lot of wanham over the top um and i'm honestly i don't know ej diamond is just a cheat code you throw the ball to him i don't care where he's at and he's just gonna go get it i mean that was literally there was no read on that he just managed to come back for it you know with the training regimen being as high as it is we uh the best way to capitalize is just to score a lot of points let the XP keep getting higher as we get a nice hurdle by EJ Diamond. Second and 10 here. The hitch route going to get open. Barku gets so much space and he slides. Belly slides in the rain. Can't do shit. Brooks sucks. My lot of sucks. They go for two and they get stopped. Onside kick. We get the ball back. A minute 39 and we're up by 10. I'm loving it. I am loving it. McDonald's sponsorship is on its way. Wanham demands a lot of respect, but he never gets it. And that's why we are always able to capitalize over the top. Can EJ Diamond continue to do more things? Maybe call a timeout. 57 yarder with some wind. Hamp McMath. He's got the range for it. And it is wide right. Doesn't matter. Miles Logan gets an upgrade. Kind of getting him more well-rounded. And Daryl Skule is going to get a strength upgrade as well. So linebackers both getting an upgrade. And we'll be taking on the number two team in the AFC. So a juggernaut matchup. It's basically a battle for the first round bye. I think we will go ahead and go whites at home versus the black jerseys. The stealth black for the Jets. I want to get the ball to the big tight end here. Maybe make him rumble and bumble for some extra yards. Is it weird that I also miss throwing the ball to the running back and also just running the ball as a whole? Uh, kind of weird for me to say that considering this team usually sucks at running the ball, but EJ Diamond nonetheless is able to get a nice chunk play. I got to be smart here because I feel like they're trying to bait me to make a bad pass, but instead EJ Diamond gets a touchdown over the middle and want him a quick ball of pass to the flat. He's still on his feet. Barku makes a move, makes a lot of defenders miss. Can we get out of bounds? Nope, we fumble the ball. Inbounds instead. Barku got a hitch route. Maybe he gets some separation. He does. We got a lot of space. I'm going inside. I got the timeouts to work with it. Oh my God, he gets a hurdle. Look at Barku go. Can he make the last, last defender miss? He doesn't. It's a 45-yard reception. What an amazing play. 
Do we have enough time, maybe? EJ Diamond on the goal line, one second left. Tristan Tevi was obviously the number two to Antoine Tupu, but Barku as a rookie has really shown out and shown that he might be my favorite uh, option B as far as receivers go. If that is the case, it's probably actually the big tight end, but if we're talking about just strictly receivers, what is going on? What is going on? It's not that he makes a crazy plays every time. It's just when he does make a play, it's always electric. And EJ Diamond, oh my God, he got a stiff arm and a hurdle. He is getting all the way down the field. You know what? I'm taunting and we're going to get in there. Always taunt before you score a touchdown. That's a must. And the Jets finally are not able to convert. The defense holds up and forces them to punt. And look at Wanham still on his feet. So we got to get down the field, capitalize with the possession we are uh, been, we've been gifted, if you will, maybe over the middle. I have a lot of time in the pocket. Honestly, getting rid of my old offensive lineman, Pete, sending him back to the Buccaneers uh, was a great decision because uh, I've had a lot of time in the pocket, honestly, since getting rid of him. It's almost like offensive linemen don't do anything. Hey, hey, Simon, why don't you why don't you make them make a difference? Because truthfully, I don't feel it, that's for sure. My, uh, what was the name I gave him? Mike Wilson, just standing, dancing around in the pocket. How long can he do this for is the question. Taking up as much time as we can, and I'm throwing it to EJ Diamond. We score the touchdown with 30 seconds left. That seems to be the sweet spot for getting the touchdowns in. Get the two-point conversion. The Jets need to go down the field and get a two-pointer. It doesn't happen. We avoid injuries. We take sole ownership of the AFC. What a big game that was. 16 coaching credits now. I think it's officially time. He's got a speed upgrade and a temporary arm accuracy upgrade. Time to turn the training regimen to normal. I think that's a, a fair and smart decision. Week 14 now, they are three and nine. It shouldn't be too difficult to take care of them at home. EJ Diamond, nice move underneath. He's got a lot of room to work with. He makes a juke inside. He gets the hurdle. How big are these plays gonna be? I mean, I, truthfully, how how far can he go? He's going back inside. He's still on his feet. Do I reward him here? Nah, I just give the ball to Barku. Maybe he can make a move here. Makes a hurdle and a fumble, and luckily, Wanham makes a recovery. Again, annoying stuff when the fumbles happen, but at least we're able to recover and people are in the right place at the right time. Seattle going for it on fourth down, getting sacked. We have the ball right back. That's such a weird decision for them to go for that. We score an instant touchdown. What is Seattle doing? And with the way this offense has been moving, you're, you're asking to get another touchdown dropped right on your head. The offense is feeling like we're on easy mode right now. And we got one-on-one -on -one with Barku again. Can he make the catch here? He does. Makes the hurdle, dives it in, and we just keep pouring it on. EJ Diamond again with a stiff arm as well. He's showing the strength. Barku, touchdown. And EJ Diamond continuing to fight with the offensive coordinator. What the fuck are you, is your guys' issues? I don't get it. This is definitely our season to lose. And I'm going so deep. I don't even know what that decision was, but somehow we managed to make it. The way this offense is moving, I just feel like this team is very special. It just feels a little bit different. It feels like when I'm playing, pretty much be unstoppable. I mean, this team has never really been in doubt as far as we've gotten more stops uh, in this season than I've seen probably ever in a, a season I've played. But it would be such a far uh, fall from grace. You know what I mean? Uh, we, we still have a chance to do so, uh, but right now a minute left is not nearly as pretty as a minute and a half. So scoring with 56 seconds, hoping Miami either turns the ball over it's looking... Oh, my God, we made an interception. Okay, beautiful stuff. I was going to say, it's looking like they're going to be driving down the field, but unfortunately for them, they fucking suck, and they turn the ball over. Call our audibles here. They're not going to cover Wanham over the top. We just plop it right in. They are getting the ball to start the third quarter, and we make another interception, another no-name defender. That's the second time in this game. This offense has been unstoppable, as that's a bad pass. I, I I knew it was going to be a pick six. I don't even need to look at the screen. I already know it's a pick six. Of course it is. It's always, if you turn the ball over, it's going to be a pick six. But anyway, as I was saying, yeah, defensive stops are coming in an abundance in this season, and that's never been the case for any of my other series. So clearly there's something special about this. And big plays like this seem to just continue to happen over and over and over. A 41-yard run by Barku on a hitch route, if I'm not mistaken. They had to go for it on fourth down. Took up so much time for them. And again, they are going to have to stop this offense. And right now, we've got a huge return. If that would have been the hurdle, that could have been legendary. I had a full field to swipe down on, too. I think Wanham's going to get open over the top here. Maybe just catch it in quadruple coverage. Fights for it. He's still on his feet. They couldn't even tackle him with all of... Look at all those defenders. 
Doesn't even matter how many defenders they have. They can't tackle him. We go up 38 to 23. That is Daryl Skule out for five games with a knee injury. It's kind of tough, honestly, because uh, I feel like our defense was making moves and he actually has made some plays. And he's had quite a season so far. Two interceptions and a sack. That's a lot of stops. I think that's the most stops any player on our team has. Wondering what to do with these coaching credits. Uh, maybe this is the perfect time to invest in a, another defender. I have the ability to sign Giovanni Slater. 27 year old five star defensive back and that would be nice because my Alada is on a one year it could be a potential move off of him then and i think we are going to sign giovanni slater uh, i was i was very close to doing it but i'm afraid he's not going to make that big of an impact on the team we will give them the white jerseys and we will just rock out our regular home unis and we got a fucking snow jer snow game so this is gonna be very hard vasher makes an interception it's gonna be very hard to see the Bengals in all this white, but hopefully we are able to spot him. Pass to the tight end over the top. He scales up for it. It's been basically all John Trey on that on that drive. Want him underneath in the flat. Trying to size up the hurdle. We do. And he's still going, baby. He's still rocking out. Some of the defensive backs also got caught up on our uh, you know, trailing uh offensive weapons. So that's always nice. Barku over the top and getting his. I'm throwing. Beautiful. Thank you for not skying up for it. And the swipe as the Bengals drive down the field. Maialata makes a tackle. They punt. EJ Diamond over the top. I got a lot of arm strength. Uh, nice job to not uh, jump up for it and lose speed. That's what I was really happy about Barku did on the last drive is he didn't jump for it. He let the ball fall where it needed to. I don't know if he's going to be able to make that catch. It's tough. He does. He does. Oh my god, that's right. Jeff Newman is back. I forgot about that. Uh, maybe we should actually give him the ball. Maybe not. I feel like the recipe we've been rocking with has been uh, a, a secret recipe that has bread and butter on it as we make an interception. Dude, come the fuck on. Like, I know, I know that it's the pick six show whenever I'm on, but look at me. It, that's a joke. That's a joke, guys. It's a joke that he returned that ball 78 yards through everybody. It's a fucking joke. Jeff Newman over the top. That could have been bad. The cornerback like came back for it as we are trying to complete the pass. That's a bad pass. Fuck. Please stop him. Don't. Oh my God. I'm not even going to try to give it to him. I'm just going to look to throw the ball deep every time. And I'm going to neglect the run game. I'm going to throw the ball to anyone that's wide open. I'm just going to scan the middle of the field, make uh, beautiful reads, be a touchdowns difference uh, as Jeff Newman scores. And even if they do score, a minute and two seconds is enough time. But that's a, a given easy ass route. The game's over, up by nine points. Uh, fuck you guys. Skipping through it. Yep, they score onside kick. Um, oh, that was not what I was trying to do. Uh, okay, luckily the time expires. I was just skipping through it and it made me kick a 68 yard field goal. I think even if we lose a game and we tie, we have the tiebreaker with the Jets as we literally beat the Jets heads up. But it's not going to matter. Two more games before the regular season's over and we're hopping into the playoffs. Uh, I accidentally clicked simulate game. I am accidentally simulating. I will click on the screen to show it and uh, we'll try it again. Now we have one restart. We are going to start off on defense and we are going to let up a touchdown. Two and 13. They're bad uh, overall. But, you know, the Patriots, every game's a tough game. It's the NFL. Any, any given Sunday, baby. You guys know that. Not when Colby Gibbs is making beautiful fucking passes like that. Throwing three fucking pick, pick, pick sixes. I guess it's going to... Be a little tougher than I thought. I'm going to have to play very particular in this matchup. Uh, I go deep there. There we go. That was kind of a, a silly, silly decision. But you know what? I'm actually not even concerned. I feel like we can still come back and, and win this game. Defense is bound to get a stop, and they do. There we go. Force the punt, and the safety's rolling over. EJ Diamond over the top, and the hurdle, baby, and the juke inside. Jeff Newman out of the backfield. 12-yard gain, 15-yard gain. He kept going. 17 seconds left to score a touchdown. Do I think we can make this? I'm going to kick the field goal. Hamp McMath going out for his first real field goal attempt. I think we got it. We did. Okay, we get the score down to a one-point game. The only reason I did that was because I don't know 30 yards uh, on a play is going to be tough. You know, you can th I can throw the ball about 20, uh, maybe a little bit further, but even with it being the second quarter, if it was the first quarter, it would be different. But Colby Gibbs' arm does significantly drop off as the quarters uh, start to start to loom and get get over so we have a tie ball game going in overtime wouldn't be the worst thing but it should not come to that we are able to score so quickly with this high powered offense diamond we're, we're just going to dive down every single time because we're going to be able to make the passes 
So no sense in fumbling the ball. Jeff Newman, wide open over the middle. Uh, EJ Diamond actually made the catch. Uh, it doesn't even matter, really. EJ Diamond stays upright. Did I sail that? Oh my god, I actually almost did. EJ Diamond still on his feet. Get out of bounds before you fumble the ball, you fucking buffoon. Make the reception, baby. 19 seconds. We lock it in. Beating New England after being down 13 nothing. And Colby Gibbs with another upgrade. Now... This is going to be a situation where we upgrade the arm strength because he already has the exceptional morale boost. The accuracy is pretty much at a point to where I don't need it to be any higher. As long as we've got it where it's at, a 6 is beautiful. It's more than fine. Currently, 14-2. and two. We have officially locked in the first round by, but I would like to win 14 straight games as we take on the Steelers. Getting the ball to start, I've got a lot of arm strength. Uh, I've got a little too much arm strength and not enough time in the pocket, we will say. As I've got another audible. Now, as we continue to upgrade Colby Gibbs' arm strength, he is going to get more audibles. Now we have four per half, which is a ton. And I'm going so deep over the top. Longest air pass of the series. Continuing to break records, Colby Gibbs ton of time and look at that pass ej diamond uh, trying to get open oh my god barku made the catch okay can i stretch this out to the tight end into quadruple coverage he skies up for it doesn't matter how many people how many bodies you have the arm strength disappeared just enough oh my god what the fuck jeff newman is officially blacklisted he will not be receiving any uh, uh acquisitions targets or attempts for the rest of the fuck i missed the pass for the rest of the season is what i was going to say um, EJ Diamond on fourth and a gazillion, and he fucking doesn't make the catch. EJ Diamond dropped a pass. I don't even want to show you guys that. I don't even want you to see that. I like this. One-on-one. -on -one. We got enough arm strength over the top. EJ Diamond burns him. He makes the little swipe over. And the hurdle. Oh my god. If I had just stayed in bounds, and we are going to hand the ball off to Jeff Newman. I know I just blacklisted his ass, but it's an easy touchdown. We managed to tie it up here before the end of the half. And the Steelers are going to get the ball, but it doesn't matter. We get an interception. Gotta love it. Going to keep pouring it on here. I think it was uh, Angelo Vasher. And uh, just like that, we drove down the field. We are able to get a hitch route, a couple plays, and score again. And we are able to keep it moving. And we force a fumble. Miles Logan forcing a fumble. Holy shit, this offense is, is pouring it on. The defense, uh, one and the same. And John Trey Wonham taunting the Steelers. You know, it's situations like this where we're already up by two scores. I'm thinking who deserves the touchdown uh, and, and who's going to get the most uh, bang for the other buck. If you're only, you know, leveled up four or five times in your career, then you're more likely to upgrade yourself faster. You know, I need people to upgrade themselves for the playoffs because we are poised and ready to, to hop into it. We literally have a minute and eight seconds before playoff football. So... I mean, we will not be participating in the wild card. I have never seen this amount of success, and it's, of course, Mike Hunt's second year. He always needs one year to kind of transition into. We have a first round buy. We are getting the XP boost. No one gets an upgrade, which is kind of annoying because I could have used the coaching credits, but we've got 30. We're holding on to them, and we will be taking on the Raiders. They finished the season third in the AFC West, eight and eight. It would be uh, quite an upset to lose to them as we are 15 and two. 15 straight games dating all the way back to our first win in week three, and we haven't looked back since. Colby Gibbs finishing off the regular season, 47 touchdowns, 13 picks, 3,400 yards in 13 games. So honestly, an 80% completion, a very like Drew Brees peak of his career-esque Super high accuracy, a lot of touchdowns, but not a lot of yards. Uh, you know, he had an extra touchdown on the ground. Jeff Newman pretty much got outcasted this entire season because, uh, you know, the last year he played well, this year it was really John Trey Wonham having 19 touchdowns, 1,100 yards. EJ Diamond, 22 touchdowns, 2,200 yards. And Yurik Barku, gotta win rookie of the year. If it's not him, it's my tight end. 83 catches, 1,218 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Miles Logan making a couple stops. Angelo Vasher with a pick. Darnay Brooks, if only his morale was higher, I would have traded his ass. And Todd Maialata. So, you know, and Daryl Skuel, who's gonna be back, assuming we can win this matchup. Everyone's got the speed boost as well, which we love. We will upgrade the training facility, boost the morale a little bit. I'm holding on to the rest of coaching credits because I'm poised for next season. There's nothing else we should really uh, have to upgrade in order to uh, to win out. And I will see you guys for the divisional matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders in the next one. Goodbye.